of things that I've struggled with, you know, for a very long time is being really vulnerable because, oh, wow, wow, Holy Spirit activate, Holy Spirit activate, okay, but not in tears, not in tears, not in tears. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Belinda and I go by the name of Belinda Chosen. Welcome back to my channel guys. So today I'm in my living room on the couch because I just thought to myself with this video today, I really want to just get comfortable and just relax and just have a conversation, like a couch conversation with you guys and just sharing the things that God has been doing for me. And before I get into this video, I just want to say thank you guys so much. Like for your love and your support like I can't stress this enough like it encourages me to keep doing this and I've seen a lot of your comments saying like I hope your channel grows I've seen comments like you know like this deserve like to go viral like that's so encouraging to me and I'm looking at my subscribers like my channel keeps growing every day and every like with each day keeps growing like I, I went from like honestly 46 subscribers to like almost 700 that is amazing like I felt like you know, my hard work and like recording these videos and taking my time to edit these videos is paying off. And I just want to say thank God. I just want to thank God first and foremost for that. I want to say thank you guys for just supporting me, commenting on the video and liking the video. You have no idea. Like you commenting and liking the video really, really, really help the video. So if you are not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And yeah, guys, yeah. So today i'm recording like my last video of the year today is december 29th i want to record this video and get it out at, like asap and I'm, i don't want this video to be too long and i think i'm talking too much right now but i was thinking of like what i wanted my last video of the year to be what i wanted to talk about i wrote down a list of like what i was going to talk about today which was like you know things to leave in you know 2021 and then i was about to start saying that but i just felt the lord putting in my heart to like you know just talk to you guys about the things that he has personally done for me this year the miracles that i have experienced first at hand miracles that you hear about that you don't really you feel like you, you can never experience it yourself i i'm living in that right now i'm walking in that miracle and i just want to use this testimony to encourage someone who was hoping and waiting for the lord i want to use this testimony this miracle that i experienced personally to encourage you to keep the faith to keep trusting god to keep waiting for god and to keep just you know praising him and being obedient and that in due time you will reap what you sow so yeah without further ado let's get right into this video so guys where do I start? Thinking about it is getting me a little bit emotional. You know, one of the things, don't cry, I put on eye makeup. I'm not trying to cry. I have mascara on, I have eyeliner on, so I don't want to cry. One of the things that I've struggled with for a very long time is, whoo, whoa, I didn't even start the video yet, and I'm already tearing up. Okay, let's, let's. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So one of the things that I've struggled with, you know, for a very long time is being really vulnerable because, oh, wow, wow, Holy Spirit activate, Holy Spirit activate, okay, but not in tears, not in tears, not in tears, but one of the things I really struggle with um, is being vulnerable. And I hate feeling weak and I hate feeling like I have no control or no power over a situation. Even if I have no power or control over a situation, um, I'm fine as long as I know that God is in control. But sharing that struggle with somebody else and telling them where I am and what I'm struggling with is really, 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 really hard for me because I've trusted people in the past and they took that for granted and they threw it back in my face. So I had a really hard time being vulnerable because people would like use your weakness against you. So being vulnerable is something I really, really, really battle with and really, really struggle with. And even sitting here right now sharing this is honestly, it's hard for me, but I'm going to do it for the glory of God. And I just recently experienced a big miracle, like a miracle that you pray for 
that sometimes you might not really believe that it's gonna happen kind of thing or when you pray for something and God answers you in a way that you never expected and he blows your mind and you feel like you're dreaming and I'm still in awe of what God did and what he's doing and so let me give you a little backup story before I get right into the miracle. And I, the miracle is recorded live. Okay, I didn't know about, I didn't know that this was gonna happen on this day. So it was, it, everything's on camera. I'm gonna try and see if I can insert the video up somewhere after I've, um, after. So basically, um, I live on my own, and I live on my own, and you know, I left my job a while ago. And I just felt like, you know, God was calling me to bigger and better things. And, you know, I was, I was experiencing bullying in the job and racism and stuff like that because I was the only black person in that job. And I had to leave. And leaving was very hard for me. Like, I remember, like, working one day and in the middle of working, I just felt my heart, God was saying, it's time for me to go. And I ran out of the workplace and I ran outside and I bawled my eyes out like I cried my eyes out my like, god like I know I don't feel good here but it's paying my bills like it's paying my bills like I got bills to pay like um I'm, I was planning on traveling that that time I'm like man if I knew this was gonna happen I would I would have never bought that ticket to, to travel because I was, I was going to Berlin Germany Berlin and I was going to Italy I'm just like oh my gosh like you know like what do I do I'm, I'm, I'm on my own, like, I, I, I hate sharing the things that I'm going through in the first place, like, who do I ask for help? But I'm like, you know what, God, like, if this is you leading me out of here, I trust you, I will go. That's why, like, I stress being obedient. Like, I can't stress it enough. Being obedient is very important, and I really see how, you know, it's really paid off. So, you know, I left that job, and... You know, I started looking for other jobs and for some reason I couldn't find a job and I recently went back to school and I graduated from social work and as hard as I tried and sent in those resumes and all those things, I couldn't find a job. Nobody was hiring me. I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, I felt like God led me to go back to school and I got this degree, this diploma, but was it a waste of my time? And, you know, I just started to question everything, like, am I really walking in the right direction? Am I really hearing from God kind of thing? So fast forward now, COVID happens, the lockdown and stuff like that. And now with the demands and like all these different mandates, it was really, really hard, especially where it's like I graduated from a certain program and because I didn't get into that work field at the time, it became really hard for me to find something in that field because, they wanted someone with experience. Like, I'm like, but how do I get experience if you're not gonna hire me? Like, it makes no sense. But most of the times, this companies, this agencies or whatever, they want somebody that already knows what they're doing, somebody with experience. So it's been it's been hard, you know, finishing school, can't find a job in my field. So I'm like, you know what, I'm tired. I'm just gonna look for a job outside of my field. And I was doing that, and due to you know the pandemic, it was very, very hard to find a job. But you know, the bills were was paid because God had made a way. He was making a way tremendously. I was never late on no bills and never been late on my rent. So like, you know what I mean? Like, even this time I didn't have a car and I was praying for a car and God was telling me like, yeah, I'm gonna provide you with a car kind of thing. I thought it was like crazy because no job, how do I get approved for a car? And fast forward, I went into the dealership just to test drive a car, just for fun, just to manifest the blessing, just to say, Lord God, I'm walking my faith. I'm going to this dealership to try, just to test drive a car. And, you know, in due time, like, it'll happen because my previous car that I had before had broken down, like, it just stopped in the middle of the highway. And I wasn't in no rush to get one because I'm like, you know what, let me save money to get something better. So... With no job, I was able to get a car, I was approved, like it was amazing. And fast forward now, um, you know, like, you know, when you save money, when you have money in your savings and you're not working, eventually don't, that money will run out because you keep taking out of your savings, taking out of your savings. And eventually I started coming to the end of myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, my money's running out. What do I do? Like, I still can't find a job. I had interviews went well no callback followed up no callback 
another interview, nothing. Like, it was just like, Laura, what do I do? And I felt like God was just teaching me in this moment, like, rely on me. Trust in me. Depend on me. Believe that I'm able to do abundantly above all you can ask or think. According to, you know, his power that's at work in me. Just believe. Like, trust me. Do you not trust me? Do you not trust me? Like, trust me me like god was just teaching me to so just to rely on him completely to trust him completely and around august in the beginning of august um i was going to my church uh well my previous church which i was going to and you know because of like covid and everything um we started watching it online so i wasn't able to go in person uh, like often but i was watching it online but in August, okay, God, I just put in my heart to fast, but because I was already having like health issues with like my stomach and stuff like that, and I was like, it was just like the the health issues that I experienced in my body in twenty twenty was crazy. Like all these stuff started happening. Like you know, I found out that I had some gas gastric problems and stuff like that. So I wasn't supposed to not eat. Like it says, it heal. It's, like over time it heals, but I, I I was I can't miss a meal. Like I have to eat. Like I can't fast or nothing like that. But now here I am. God is putting my, putting in my heart to fast, and I'm just like man, I can't fast. Like with I, my stomach is healing right now. I need to keep food in my stomach. You know what I mean to prevent it from getting worse, so we can get better. And I try to ignore it. And God had led me to the book of Esther, and I read the whole chapter. I'm like, oh my gosh, Esther's breakthrough. Like even though in Esther never mentioned God once, but we know that. You know, talking about God and like fasting and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, Esther got a breakthrough from fasting from three days and, and three days and three nights, no food, no water. I've done it before, like, but I just don't feel the strength. To, I don't have the strength. And I went on my WhatsApp and somebody had posted up like a quote from the book of Esther about how, you know, the breakthrough of Esther and how she fasted and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, God, you're talking to me. I'm like, you know what? I don't care what's going on in my stomach right now. I'm just going to have faith and do a dry fast for three days. No food, no water. And this is honestly, fasting is very important. So I did that for three days and three nights. I fasted with no food, no water, um, no TV, nothing. I was just in my room. Of course, I showered. Other than showering, going out to go shower, I was in my room for three days. Um, worshiping, praying, seeking, interceding, you know, just seeking God's face, like just dying to my flesh and really just allowing Holy Spirit to just activate, allowing God to just do his work in me. And kid you not, I start to hear, oh my God, I start to hear clearly from the Lord. Like things, start, I felt like things started shifting and I started writing down the words that God was putting in my heart. Like, you know, one of the words that God put in my heart was like, that I wrote down was surprises in store for you. Trust me. That came to pass in the thing I'm about to tell you guys about, the miracle that just happened in my life. And it was like, surprises, be excited. There are surprises in store for you. When I wrote that down, I'm like, oh my gosh, surprises in store for me. So I started praying about financial breakthrough. I'm like, Lord, make a way for me because like, you know, I need a financial breakthrough. And even though I was struggling financially, God's to put in my heart to give, um, to still tithe and still give what I could when I could. And I did that. And after the three days of fasting, I spoke in tongue for the first time. Usually I was kind of person who was kind of iffy, like how do people speak in tongues? Like, are they making it up? And when that happened to me, it was an amazing experience. Like none I can, I can express. And that only happened through me fasting and praying and dying to myself. Man, I didn't want this video to be too long, but you know what? I just want to let Holy Spirit lead. So, um, there's a church that I went, I visited once. Uh, my friends, my friend, my friend goes there. He gave a testimony and they invited us and I went. That was the first time I went there. And prior to um, fasting, my friend had invited me to this church. The church's name is Sur City. She had invited me to the church. I'm just like, you know what, well, not right now. I'm not led to go there. I just like my, I love my previous church right now. And this is where I am right now. But after I fasted, God put it in my heart go to surf city i'm just like you know what i didn't argue it 
I didn't I did not question it I called my friend up because she fasted with me too uh, I called my friend up I'm like listen I want to go to Star City on Sunday. She's like, wow. She's like, I was going to ask you again if you want to go because God put it in my heart to go there. So I'm like, okay, let's go to Star City. Star City now is like five minutes from my house. And Sunday I got ready. She registered us for Sunday service. I drove there and it was amazing. I felt like, wow, the word that I heard that Sunday was what God wanted me to hear. Like, this was the message that I needed. You know, God has an amazing way for bringing the right things to you in the right time, in the season, your, the, the meal at the, like your meal at the right time. Like, that was what I needed to hear in that time. And it really registered with me. And the series that they've been preaching, that they were preaching when I got there was Don't Be Scared. And I it really got to me because I've been scared, being fearful, being afraid. Like, okay, God, what do I do uh, in order to save money, in order to be able to pay my bills? Do I move back to my mom's house? Like, what do I do? And I prayed about it and cried about it. My Lord, help me. Do I move? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? Like, what do I do? And if I do stay, God, are you going to make a way for me? Are you going to make a way out of nowhere? What do I do? So I, I really seek God. I'm like, Lord, should I move? And God was like, no, don't move. Stay where you are. I'm like, but this sounds bizarre. Stay where I am. But Lord, like, the bills got to be paid. Like, I guess, like, isn't it better for me to go to my parents' house just to catch a break and not for, from bills for a while? Because I've, I've been on my own since I was, like, 17 for years. You know, like, let me go catch a break. Let me see if I can save some money again and get back on my feet. And God was just like, no, stay where you are. If you go back there, you are going to miss your breakthrough. <clears throat> if you go back there, you're going to miss your husband. I'm like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, because God, God is speaking to me about marriage and stuff like that. If you go back there, you're going to miss the miracle. If you go back there, you're going to miss your blessing. If you, go, you can go back there if you want, but I'm telling you, if you go back there, if you move back there, you are going to miss the thing that I prepared for you. You are going backwards and not forward. And I'm just like, whoa, I do not want to miss anything God has for me. I don't want to miss that that husband that I might that I'm gonna meet along the way going forward one day like I don't want to miss <clears throat> the blessings I don't want to miss the miracle so I was very obedient and I went to the church and it was amazing and I just felt led to go there every Sunday so I started going there towards the uh, end of August okay and one night um, I got to just put in my heart to write a prayer request and. I wrote this prayer request. Um, at first, like I said, I hate being vulnerable, so I didn't want to send it to the church. Though people didn't really know me at the church or even see my face or know what I look like because when you, when we go to church, you have to wear a mask. So nobody really saw what I look like. and Nobody really, really knows me except for like my friend, her brother, and his wife that's there. And I, I just wrote this prayer request, and God was just like, send it to Surf City. I'm like, nope. I am not sending it to Surf City because just in case somebody knows my name from the church, Belinda, they're going to see my email, Belinda, ahotmail.com, Belinda, Bazi, ahotmail.com. I'm like, no, Lord God, this message is too vulnerable. Long story short, the message was, um, um, you know, I'm praying for a financial breakthrough. Like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Like, you know, I'm just praying that God comes through something along that line. And me sending that prayer request wasn't me expecting for anyone to call me or to text me or to message me back. It was just to, like, for them to just join me in prayer and intercede on my behalf. So I send that off now. Fast forward, um, a prayer team, uh, well, I, I got a response from like the email saying, you know, we're praying for you, um, we're standing the gap with you, and if you want to talk to someone, like if it's not too much, something along that line. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I guess I can pray with someone on the phone and whatever. And so this Sunday when this miracle happened, okay, first of all, I went to bed Saturday night. I did not set my alarm. I told God, like, I'm not going to go to the church today. Um, I'm just going to stay home because I just, I don't know. I guess this was the enemy trying to, like, keep me home. And I didn't know what was about to happen. So God, the church starts at 1030. God woke me up that morning at 6 a.m. And I did not set my alarm. So when I woke up, I looked at the time. I'm like, you know what, God, if you wake me up to go, I'll go. And I looked at the time. It was 6 a.m. I'm like, okay, God. Yes, you're waking me up to go to the church. But man, the church starts at 1030. It's 6 a.m. Can you wake me up a little bit more later? Like, 
can we do this? Can we wake up at eight at least, not six? And I was about to enter back into a deep sleep and my cousin had called me. She face she uh, FaceTimed me and I got so mad. I was about to tell her like, do you know what time it is? You know, cause she lives in England and they're five hours ahead. So I'm like, do you know what time it is? She's like, you just called me twice. I'm like, I never called you. She's like, I have a missed call from you. You just called me. I'm like, whoa, I never called you. Nothing like that. Like I never called you. She's like, well, you did. I'm like, well, maybe this is a sign. Maybe God's God's angels or God is calling you so he can wake me up so I can get up ready and go to church. So I got up, I started getting ready um, <laughs> to go to church. I remember that day, like I put a little bit effort, a little bit more effort into my hair, like I, than I usually would. I put a little bit more effort into like you know making myself presentable, like I usually would because obviously I'm always wearing masks. So I don't really care. As long as my eyebrows is done, I have my eyeliner, my eyelashes, whatever, my mascara, I'm fine. But as I was in the mirror getting ready, I made a joke to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, like, the fact that you woke me extra early today to get ready, you know, put on a nice outfit, I'm like, what are you about to do? Not knowing what's about to happen, okay? Not knowing what is about to happen. So I got ready and I went to the church, okay? Just a regular Sunday. I went to the church and... You know, worship was amazing as usual, praising the Lord, thanking God, knowing that God would make a way out of no way, glorifying him, you know, joining with other believers in like praising him. It was such an amazing, it's, it's always such an amazing experience. And the pastor's wife come on stage, the pastor's on stage, and the pastor's wife come on stage. She has said something that now makes sense to me. She's uh, She said something to her husband, Pastor Chantel. Shout out to Pastor Andrew and Pastor Chantel from Surf City. Um, Pastor Chantel has said to Pastor Andrew, I don't know what she said, but he was like, you want to do it now? And then she's like, yeah. I'm like, what about to do? You know, like the church is such an amazing church. I'm like, what about to do? Like, you know, so he started talking and stuff like that, started speaking. And then he's like, Belinda, he called my name, guys. He called my name. I'm like, is there another Belinda in this church? But you know what? Let me show you exactly what happened. Let's watch this clip. We want to highlight in the house today. And so um, I, I, want to, I want to do something very special in this moment. Belinda, can you come here for a second? Can you come here? Can we celebrate her as she comes in, the mo in this moment? Come on. She's like, why are you calling me up here? Listen, we as a church family understand the difficulty of this season. How many of you know that this has been a difficult season for many? And we wanted to call you up here because not to put your stuff on blast, we're not going to put numbers and things out there, but it's been made aware to us a big ask request and thing that you have put out there is in relation to the fact that this has been a very difficult and challenging season for you. And it's been made, we've been made aware of this and we've chatted around the difficulty of the season to the place where there's been loss of employment. And even as we know, as you've made aware, not only loss of employment, but as a result, things have gone behind to the point where you've had to use credit and things that you don't even want to use. And it's just been insane to hear about the situation. And I know, I know that you've been at the brink of, you know, of even it's just been difficult and at the brink of almost losing it all. And there's no way that we as a church family could hear that this is the case. And we all as a church family are saying not on our watch. And so we didn't call you up here today to put you on blast and put your business out there and all that. But we are aware of all of this. And you know the thing that blessed me? And I didn't, and I didn't tell you this. The thing that blessed me, she don't know that we were going to do this at all. But, but the thing that blessed me the most is, I don't know, how, I don't know who gives at our church. Uh, the only people that I know about their giving is our leadership. Uh, because I want to make sure that they're setting an example to you all. But I don't know who gives because I don't want, we don't want to treat people based upon what they give. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just trying to operate with integrity. But when, we, when this request came in and we heard and we saw what you put out there, the accounting team reached out to me and they were like, Pastor, do you realize that even in Belinda's season of difficulty that she gave even in the time that she had difficulty? Oh. 
And that blessed us so much. We were so blown away that even in a time of challenge, that you would still see fit to sow into the house. And so today as a church family, I'm excited. There's two things that we get to do today. And I'm stoked, all of you online and in the house, uh, because of your generosity today, we as a church, Surf City Church, is paying off all of your back rent, paying off all of your debt that you have accumulated. We're paying off all the cell phone, all the car stuff, all the rent stuff. You better praise him with her. Come on, you ought to give the Lord thanks. Even your faithfulness. You didn't realize that that little that you sold in the time of need, that God was going to open it all up and blow your mind. Your credit cards are going to be at zero. Your landlord's getting that check. Come on, somebody. So look, I know, look, so not only this, not only is all the debt being paid off, uh, but we're also paying uh, one month in advance for your rent. So, so the next month's rent, we're not just paying it off and then you're in the same position. Next month's rent is going to be paid off as well. And not only that, uh, we're also covering and taking care, giving you a, a gift card for a generous amount of groceries. Come on, somebody in this we celebrate the goodness of our God that God can how many of you know your life can change in a matter of seconds come on somebody this is why we are generous as a church and lastly we know that you lost your job and we are hooking you up someone to help you potentially get a job for this next season for you you got a job interview on Monday give him the glory somebody give him the honor come on come on can you stretch your hands towards Belinda God we thank you for her today we thank you for Belinda and for what you're done in her life Lord God even this season of difficulty even all that she has faced Lord she is still striving to be faithful to you and we thank you that even in her time of need Lord that she gave so that others could meet you she even put this request in not expecting anything and so we thank you that our church family in this moment has been able to come around her bless her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet her going out her coming in let the generations after her let the young people around her be able to see a witness lord and give glory to you because of this awesome thing done in her life we thank you and we give you praise in jesus name somebody say amen come on and give the lord praise we love you yeah you saw that clip right speechless i am so amazed of the goodness of god his mercy and his grace that thinking about it, it still gives me chills. Um, it feels so unreal. I'm still in awe of God's goodness. And shout out to Surf City for your obedience and just your sacrifice. Like as you pour out, I pray that God continuously pour into you. And This is one of the things I've been saying. The blessing of obedience. If I had moved back home, I would have missed this because this just brought me even more closer to God. I would have missed this miracle. I would have not experienced the sight of God for myself. Like God has come through for me many times before, miraculously, financially, in every way you can think of, like healing, you know, like, he's come through for me times and times again. But you see, the, the way he did it this time, I can never have expected it to happen. I can never have imagined it to happen. So that's why I want to just come on here and share this with you and tell you, like, 
God is still a miracle working God. God can change your life around in a moment. God can change your life around in an instant, in a in a blink of an eye. God can change your situation. And this is just to encourage you guys, like keep the faith, be obedient, and keep pressing toward the mark. Keep holding on to God. Because like I've seen things like this happen before, like this kind of miracles. I never thought it would, it would happen to me in this way. Though I am, I was praying for a miracle, praying for a breakthrough. I knew that God was going to come through some way or the other because God doesn't lead you where he doesn't provide. And a big part of me, even though I was still scared, knew that if God had told me to stay here, there is no way God wasn't going to make a way because God doesn't lead where he doesn't make provisions. There was no way God you know, wasn't going to make a way. My fear was the uncertainty of how he was going to do it, of not knowing how he's going to come through, you know, when he's going to come through. That was the things that really kind of like, you know, trying to steal my peace and my joy. But once I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stop worrying because what does worrying do to me? It just makes the situation worse. Does worry add a single day to my, to, a day to my life? Does it add an hour to my life? No. So every time where, you know, those storms of the issues of life will come i will consciously just tell myself don't entertain it you dwelling on this is not going to make things better it's just going to make you have more anxiety so i just been like you know what lord i trust you 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 and i prayed and i cried and he answered me and that's just confirmed the word that he gave me during my fasting like be excited surprises are in store for you and Hello, I was surprised, still shocked, okay? So I just want to tell you that surprises are in store for you as well. Keep holding on to him. Keep praying. Don't, like, lose hope. I pray that God will awaken your hope and your trust in him and your confidence in him for your expectation is from God. Honestly, like, it's so amazing. And for me being afraid to share in that prayer request where I felt like it was so, I felt so vulnerable in a place where I felt weak, God used it. God used it. It really, it really just brings alive the Bible scripture that says, we have not because we ask not. Sometimes when we ask, we don't believe, so we don't receive. So this has just changed my life. It's really brought me up higher in God. It's really just elevated my faith, elevated my trust in Him, elevated my expectation. And even now, like um, I was as I was praying this morning, I just felt God telling me in my heart. Like I actually wrote it down. I want to read it for you guys, just to see that, just to know that God is still working in my life and that He He can do a work in yours too, as long as you allow Him. This morning I was praying. I was I was so excited. Like I was I was praying and I was reading my Bible and I just felt this sudden joy in my heart in my spirit and uh, I just felt led to write it down. And what I wrote down was I titled it I titled it Word Slash Declaration. And number one was God is doing a new thing and is about to manifest. God is doing a new thing and it's about to manifest. He's already done it and I'm and I'm about to see it. So God is doing a new thing. He's already done it and I'm about to see it. And this is me writing down the word and, de and declaring it over my life. And number two is get excited. God is about to blow your mind. I'm like, Lord, as if you have, as if you have you haven't already blown my mind. What more can you do? Like you've blown my mind. My socks are blown off. And God is just like, no, I haven't even started yet. Number three was you thought he was finished with the miracle at Surf City, but he has just begun. I'm like, whoa, what? And then number four is 2022 is going to be my year of unlimited breakthroughs. So I'm already declaring it because you know there's power in our words. So me writing out this word and declaring it out loud is already ha it already has power. So 2022 is going to be my year of unlimited breakthroughs. Number five. Oh my gosh. This one is a deep one and I'll share it with you guys because you guys are going to be like a witness as well to my testimony. And <clears throat> number five is my marriage will come to pass. My kingdom marriage will come to pass. Number six is my husband will pursue me like no other man has done before. That is my number six declaration. Number seven and what God has put in my heart to declare is he will love me like no other man has loved me before as Christ loves the church. So 
when my husband pursues me, he will love me like no other man has loved me before, as Christ loves the church. And then number eight, my YouTube ministry will take off. Number nine, I will continually grow in, grow more in Christ, and he will take me even up higher in the things of God. Number 10, God's promises for me will unfold and come to pass, and I will definitely see it. That is the word that I wrote down today, and that's my declaration for 2022. I'm saying this to tell you guys to take down your notepad, take down your pen, and write down your declaration. Write down what you want to see happen. By faith, declare it, and it will come to pass. Declare it. Speak it. Let it manifest. Speak it because there's power in your words. And firsthand, honestly, God is just so good and just so amazing. So I just wanted to share share this with you guys and make this my last video of the year uh, before we go into the year 2022. We just encourage you to keep the faith and keep pressing on towards the mark and that in due time, you will reap what you sow. For those who sow with tears shall reap with joy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so yeah, that's just my miracle. I just wanted to like honestly just be transparent with you guys, just to share with you guys. And you know what's crazy? At first I'm like, let me do like the video of like, you know, my five favorite skincare of 2021. That's going to get a lot of views or let me do something like you know the stuff to leave in 2021 like stuff like i have stuff like no stop stuck in that man stop using fake accounts to stop people like i had like stuff like fun things like that that i want to talk about but this is where i'm led to and i should not be worried about views uh, as long as what i should be concerned about is that i'm doing what god's called me to do and i'm walking in obedience and i'm walking by faith and allowing god to just take the lead so whether it gets 10 views or 20 views or 30 30 views or 20,000 K views or whatever it may be as long as God is getting the glory I felt like I've done my part and that God will do the rest but yeah guys honestly I really hope that the new year to come will bring you guys all the breakthroughs that you've been praying for all the open doors that you've been you've been asking for and that like, one of the things I also hope for you guys is that your will you know, will, will be surrendered, that you will surrender your will and let God's will be your will, like, and that your life will align with God's will. And if you haven't read the Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of obedience, go and read that. It's, it's honestly, it'll blow your mind. It's so important. So, so, so very important. But yeah, I hope that your year, your new year is filled with great things, breakthroughs. And I pray that God will birth you in purpose and that God will bring you to your fullest potential in Christ, in him. And that, you know, that the doors that he opens for you, that no man can shut it. And that you will elevate and exceed above and expectantly, you know, above what people think of you and that you elevate higher than the expectation of people of you that your expectation will be in God and be from God but yeah I just want to say I love you guys honestly thank you so much for your support I just want to say happy new year happy new year happy new year happy new year I love you guys and I'll see you guys again next year in another video bye I thank God for the best up.